Hey there, everyone. Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com, and welcome to this special edition of The Final Bar. This is the third in a three-part series addressing the uh, top 10 charts of the month that my friend Grayson Rose and I have selected every month here on Stock Charts TV. It's been a really fun monthly exercise to sit down with Grayson, both bring five charts to the table, and then we discuss and debate them. We've included a link uh, below to uh, some of the recent episodes that we've done in that series. But this is the third part of a three-part series where we're digging a little deeper, a little behind-the-scenes look at how we construct those lists of charts. The first episode uh, where I would start, if you've not seen that yet, go back and, uh, and start there, is we talked about how we uh, actually select the stocks for the episodes, uh, how we use the scanning engine, the alert system, um, just simple chart review to identify some of the charts that are at more actionable uh, moments when we uh, when we need them. The second episode that we uh, just wrapped uh, dealt with uh, how we monitor the positions and how you track performance of a group of stocks over time. And today we'll talk about the third piece, which is risk management. How do you identify or acknowledge when the chart is no longer doing what you think it should and when you need to make sure that you unwind a position before it really starts to cause havoc in your portfolio. And again, the purpose of this three-part series is partly to help you understand a little bit behind the scenes about how we are selecting those stocks and what we would actually do with them. But it's really more meant to encourage you to think critically about your own process. How are you identifying potential investment opportunities? How are you monitoring the performance of a list of stocks in your portfolio or watch list? And how are you appropriately managing risk? I hope that you can come up with some nuggets of investment wisdom as you're watching these episodes. And again, think critically about your own process. And we certainly hope that stock charts can be one of the main ways that you answer each of those questions as an investor every trading day. So in the second uh, part of this uh, three-part series, we talked about uh, you know, monitoring performance. We talked a little bit about risk management because you know, in general, I think of risk management as you know, managing for potential downside risk. You know, I was taught uh, when I was just getting started that you're not going to be right all the time. As a matter of fact, you're going to be wrong a lot more than you think you want to be. A lot of investors, if you were good in score, you're used to getting like an A or a B, which means you're right 80, 90 plus percent of the time. As an investor, you're rarely right that often. And so I found, particularly with new institutional investors, they struggle a lot with the fact that they're wrong way more than they, uh, than they want to be. So when you're looking at uh, charts, when you're analyzing charts, it's all about you know, recognizing when you're right and sticking with it and staying right as long as possible. So as long as that chart continues to do what you think it should do, you stick with it and you don't sell early. And then the second part of that, which is equally as important, if not more important, is admitting when you're wrong and, and acknowledging when the chart is no longer doing what you think it should and getting out of that uh, losing position. You know, uh, there's a whole set of uh, behavioral biases, uh, particularly endowment bias comes to mind, where we tend to hold on to things way too long because of our emotional attachment to the position as opposed to a, you know, a, a, uh, a thorough review of the evidence as an objective uh, perspective. So I hope we can get more to that. So what we're going to do today, <coughs> excuse me, is just select four charts, four charts that we've, uh, that we talked about uh, in the uh, in the last couple uh, specials of the top 10 charts specials and uh, and go through them. Two of them that have worked pretty well, two of them that have worked not so well and talk about how risk management fits into or should fit into your analysis of each one of those. We'll start with Applied Materials, which is a chart that uh, Grayson Rose had selected in one of our uh, recent episodes. And we talked, about, uh, we talked about it back here where it was basically the setup that we talked about was the rally in Q1 to a peak in March and then this consistent resistance around 214 or so. We then pulled back a little bit and then retested 214 and broke out. And what happened was we did break out, we pulled back, and then we broke even higher. So, you know, how would you think about it? So I would say, you know, let's assume you take a position here, which is when you've looked at the resistance level, we've pulled back, you see us coming back up, and you think, all right, if we break above that level, that's where I would take my position. So how do you manage risk? So I would tell you that in my own trading journal, right, and I keep an old school pencil and paper trading journal as I have for years, any position that I, that I, that I take, any trade that I make has three lines. Line one, what am I doing? Line two, why am I doing it? Line three, what would tell me I'm wrong? And that third line is so ultra important. So how would I answer this question if I was taking a position in Applied Materials in mid-May? I would say, what am I doing? I'm accumulating a position of X shares in Applied Materials at Y level, whatever it is I'm actually executed. 
Line two, why am I doing it? I'm seeing a breakout above resistance at 214, and I like the strength that we're seeing as we uh, remain above upward sloping moving averages or something like that. I'm paraphrasing just something I might put in there. The third line, I because I think we're in an uncertain market conditions, I'd keep a stop very tight. So probably a break below this breakout level, I would probably, uh, you know, a valid close below that breakout level, I would probably... Um, I would probably uh, unwind the position, something like that. Or I would take a partial stop at that level. I would take a total stop if we would break below the 50-day moving average, right? You can have multiple levels to that and just make sure you're clear. The point of this is not that what you write is it needs to be perfect. It's that you have a good strategy and that it is written down because then when those things happen, it's not a judgment call like, ooh, should I sell it? Maybe I still want to hold it. It's like we hit the thing, you're done, and you stop thinking about it. So what actually happened on Applied Materials, assuming you had that particular uh, sense in mind. So we did break out. We did pull back to the breakout level, which is actually very, very common. But look at what happened here, right? We never really closed significantly below that breakout point. And we have these long, lower shadows. You probably call these hammer candles, which are actually a pretty bullish candle when you see it in a pullback. So that happening as we test support for me would probably give, give me even more confidence of the fact that we're probably going to push on to, uh, to new highs. And from there, we've made a new all-time high. We've made a higher low at an ascending 20-day exponential moving average, and we're continuing to rotate higher. So this is one where I think like the risk management was actually pretty clear in terms of my interpretation of the chart. Had a pretty good sense uh, of where I'd probably put a stop. I would say at this point, uh, the stops held and I didn't really get stopped out and probably would have continued to ride that trade uh, to our route today as we continue this pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And then as I implied in the introduction, as long as that pattern continues, you want to kind of stick with it. So first takeaway, hopefully, is remember the time to actually determine your risk appetite, determine your risk management strategy is at the entry point. Way too often I see people make a trade, then it starts to not work, and then they think, uh-oh, when should I sell? And the, the right answer is right when you pull the trigger, that's when you determine your risk, right? Because then you're defining, here's my upside potential, here's my downside potential, and I'm clearly defining it and limiting it because I have a stop already in, in, uh, in play. Second chart as highlighting a pretty pretty constructive example would be Billy Billy. This is a Chinese uh, name here listed in the U.S. on the Nasdaq, um, and I think uh, Billy Billy, as we talked about it earlier this year, was an example of a rotation from a distribution phase. Uh, to an accumulation phase. The middle third of the chart is a clear distribution phase, in my opinion, where we're making lower lows and lower highs. We're below two downward sloping moving averages. Look at the RSI, which remains clearly in the bearish range, never really gets above 60 on these rallies. And so the momentum overall is very negative. Then look at how that all changed in the first quarter of this year, right? We went from making lower lows to higher lows, lower highs to higher highs, we went from being below two downward sloping moving averages to being above two upward sloping moving averages. The RSI went from a clear bearish range to a clear bullish range where we're becoming overbought on rallies. The RSI is not getting down to 40. So this is more, I think, clearly rotating into more of an accumulation phase. You know, we talked about this chart uh, at the breakout here above the 200-day moving average and above the March high. And I think that's an important uh, thing to remember, right? For me, the entry point for this particular chart was, all right, we've set a resistance level in mid-March. We eclipse that level and eclipse the 200-day moving average. There's my entry. That tells me that's the trigger telling me this is now something different. The accumulation phase has now begun, and I want to ride this price higher. That happened in early May, and I would say from then it's been a pretty good uh, uptrend. So for me, one of the ways that I usually manage risk in this sort of chart, particularly a rotation, is just... Keep it simple. Take something like the 50-day moving average and just and, and, and write in my journal, as long as we remain above an upward sloping 50-day moving average, I'm not touching this position. Because think about what that means, right? As the price evolves, there's going to be noise, right? There's going to be up days and down days for, for a while, right? But as long as the 50-day moving average is sloping higher, then we're still making progress, right? Because if we weren't making upside progress, the 50-day moving average would probably start flattening out, right? Because the prices had come down. Um, so as long as the 50-day moving average keeps slowing higher, and as long as the price is above there, that tells me that even though we might be having some up days and down days, you know, some downswings during that uptrend, we're still making enough progress 
that it is causing the moving averages to still slope upwards. And that's why a simple risk management approach like I'm going to keep holding this as long as it remains above an upward sloping 50 day moving average. Now it's no longer a judgment call. Now it's just every day or every week, however often you review the positions. Is this chart still above an ascending 50 day moving average? Next chart. And just don't even think about it in another moment. That's how I probably would think of this particular chart. And you can see, um, you know, from May, June and now into early July, just continuing that pattern. So this is the type of chart that I would be thrilled to own as long as all of those bullish characteristics hold. We're above two upward sloping moving averages. The momentum is still in a bullish range. If I can't describe the chart that way anymore, then at the very least, I need to rethink that position. So I think Billy Billy's one that probably I would not have gotten stopped out on yet uh, and would still be very comfortable owning that as long as that uptrend uh, characteristic uh, persist. All right. Boy, we're not perfect. And I will tell you that one thing you learn very quickly as an investor is you're going to be wrong a lot. And being OK with being wrong and just moving on, right, acknowledging, yep, that wasn't the right trade. Let's move on to something else is something that uh, that I think uh, novice traders and novice technical analysts struggle with. And that is just uh, I was told that's the tuition you pay to the market, those losses where you learn painful lessons, hopefully with not a lot of zeros attached earlier in your uh, in your trading experience. So let's look at two charts that did not play out particularly well, how risk management could have helped us navigate those periods uh, a little bit better. Take two, I think, is a great example to talk through because this is one where the trigger never materialized. When we talked about this chart earlier in 2024, it was with, with this basic premise. We had made a new all-time high around $170 a share in early February. We pulled back quite a bit to around $140. Now we were back above moving averages, which were sloping upwards. That's good. And we were re-approaching that all-time high. And the thesis, as I remember describing it, was if and when we break above 170, that's the trigger, right? That's the sign that conditions are great. And until we do it, it's just not there yet. If you look, this is one where it never materialized, right? We never got above 170. We got near it. So we got around 168 and then stalled out. And so this ends up looking more like a double top pattern. Right? If you look at the weekly chart, you can see kind of this clear double topping pattern right around 168 to 170, uh, which was the resistance that we never really, uh, never really got above. So this is one where I think the trade never materialized. And, and the reason why I'm highlighting this is because I think a lot of traders, if that's their thesis, they're still buying back here somewhere. The, the, the signal hasn't happened yet, but you're so hopeful, right? This is FOMO. This is the fear of missing out. You don't want to miss out on it spiking to 220 over the next week. And so as a result, you buy early just in case it's going to break out. And I would say what's important about a trading strategy is that you clearly define it and then you follow it, right? You follow your plan. So if your plan was I'm buying the stock above 170, this is where I love to use the alert feature on stock charts uh, and basically say, tell me when take two gets above 170 and then put it on a watch list and then just don't think about it anymore. And until that trigger, until that signal happens, that alert is triggered, then you don't want to uh, you don't want to waste your time uh, you know trading a stock that hasn't really materialized into the pattern that you're looking for. If you're not familiar with stock charts, easiest way to do that is click on your name in the upper right. You should have an account, of course, as a paid member. Click on your alerts, and you can just say, um, let's see, create your first. Here we go. Click on new. I was gonna say it's right up there. All right. Then we type the ticker. Take two. It's gonna pop up with a little auto complete. That's it. Gives you a little preview chart. So here I would say crosses above 170 and uh, say take to breakout alert. And then you can select how you're notified. So I like the notified. I like to select all these. So it sends me an email. It sends me a text message. So make sure your number is correct. And then it pops up a little banner on the top of the site. I do all of those because when something is important enough, I want to know about it. And so again, whichever one of these or whichever combination of these is going to be helpful to you is what you want to do and hit save alert. And then it's saved to your uh, login. And then you can, uh, you know, again, have the stock charts platform uh, do some of the work for you. So I like to highlight this as an example of, you know, where the trade never really materialized. And, and for me, part of risk management is, you know, just not taking a, a trade that's not really uh, the right trade yet, right? Waiting waiting for the good pitches to take a, bat, a baseball analogy now that we're in the, uh, in the meat of baseball season. All right, the last example we'll look at is another chart that did not work as, uh, as, as we expected. This is the Global Natural Resources ETF, which is ticker GNR. This is one that Grayson Rose had shared uh, earlier in the, uh, in the spring. And the basic premise of this one
one was the fact that we had broken above this sort of area right around 56 to 57. And we had a number of peaks in that range going back really to early 2023. And then we finally had broken out above there. We pulled back essentially to the breakout level and then we're pushing back higher. And so the idea was, all right, I'm buying the breakout. I like the fact that we've held this, uh, you know, we've pulled back to uh, a decent level. Let's say we bought here, right? Assuming that that's, that's the point. So how do you manage risk in this sort of environment? So I would say when you're buying weakness, when you're buying a short-term pullback within a long-term uptrend, you really want to make sure that you have a good stop in mind because you are buying a weaker price action, right? And so if you're just a little bit early, the price can go way against you very, very quickly. The idea is how much of this pain to the downside are you willing to tolerate for the potential to ride the next wave higher and, and ride the uh, potential gains. In this case, we didn't get much below that breakout level from back here. We bottomed out around 56.20 and then bounced back higher. So I'd say at this point when we're making a new high, I'm probably feeling fantastic uh, about this trade. The pain really on this chart happens soon afterwards, and this is where I think you want to start to question it. Uh, Grayson tends to favor the 20-day exponential moving average. I don't use this one a lot, but I know he has it on his chart. That's sort of the, uh, the, the dotted blue line here. So maybe an initial stop, right? And, and again, don't you don't have to think of it as all or nothing. Maybe an initial stop where you unwind a partial position is when we hit the 20-day EMA. Maybe the rest of that is taken off when we break below the 50-day moving average, or when we break below my entry point, which is around 56, 20, 57, wherever I put that in there. Um, thinking of those levels could be, uh, could, be, could be pretty key. So I would say at this point, again, this is a chart that looked really, really good for a little while, but then between that point and this point, it certainly changed. And I would be thinking as an investor, um, if you did not make this trade, like what would you have seen between this point and that point that would have told you to get to get out? What what levels could you have used? And again, things that come to mind would be the 20 day exponential moving average as an initial stop or a partial stop. The 50 day moving average, as long as we're above an ascending 50 day moving average, this is a good chart. All of a sudden we're below a downward sloping 50 day, which means I probably want to uh, be uh, be taking uh, taking profits on there. So that's an example of where I think a stop was most likely triggered and some of the tools I would have used to probably identify and calculate those stops. And again, the key is to do it when you take the trade is to identify those stop levels. I want to finish off just giving you a couple uh, tips, a couple ideas of how you can use these charts to, um, you know, to really uh, help you. Uh, visually, um, three things that I would suggest you, suggest you in terms of how you can actually think about stops. Number one would be to use the annotate tool and use horizontal lines. Two things I think you can do. Number one is when I buy a stock, I like to create a line with my entry points. Let's say I bought it here. I would take this as the entry point. Um, there are different colors you can use. I usually make that as a green line because uh, on a chart list that I have with all my active positions, I have charts with green lines on them. And then I will probably do a stop in another line. So let's say the stop is uh, down at this point. I would make that a pink line or a red line or whatever's gonna tell me. And so as I save this to a chart list and as I review that list of charts every day or every week, I can identify where I entered, I can identify my stop. If I have an upside objective, at which point I wanna take profits or just where I think it's gonna go, maybe I put a line up there as well. And then I have my risk versus reward very clearly identified on the chart. Also, don't be afraid to use the notes tool um, to put in a comment with your uh, entry and exit points or whatever price levels or the date that you did it, whatever's gonna help you manage it a little bit better. The second thing I think you can think about is using the auto support and resistance. This is a really fantastic tool that basically shows you uh, the line turns green if the price is above that line or red if the price is below that. I find this is really helpful if you have a series of uh, charts that you have an active position on. Put this line at your entry point, and then as long as the line is green, you are sitting on a profit. If the line turns red, you are below your entry point. Again, that could be a good place to put, that could be a good line to use for your position, and then your stop is in red as a dotted line or something like that. Again, there's no right way to do that. It's whatever way is gonna help you most, uh, you know, most, uh, uh, help you to make sense of the markets and follow those signals. Whatever's going to compel you to take action is what you uh, is what you want to do with it. 
The last thing I would tell you in terms of managing these positions is to use the alert feature. And again, any stocks or positions that I have available or that I have uh, that I have uh, on at any point, I put on there. I often do uh, random uh, alerts for you know a breakdown. I think something uh, is going up, like the S and P 500, 5400 for me was that line in the sand. So I immediately set an alert that says tactical breakdown, and I said 5050, and that was just that was from a while ago that I had put that on there when we just broken above there. And the idea was if that alert gets triggered, then it tells me that my line in the sand is not holding. So any charts that I'm following that I think are important to watch, any positions that I take. I put those alerts on to, uh, you know, just to identify and and have the have stock charts do some of the work for me to make sure that I don't miss some of those key signals. So that is the third in our three part series talking about how we, uh, you know, select the stocks for the top 10 charts uh, that we run every month. Grayson Rose and I here on Stock Charts TV. The first episode was all about how we select those names. The second one was about how we monitor performance. And the third one, this one was about how we manage risk. I hope that that exercise gives you a little bit more color about how we do what we do. But more importantly, much more importantly, I hope that it encourages you to think critically about your own processes for each of those. How are you identifying ideas? How are you monitoring performance for a list of stocks or ETFs? And how are you managing risk? And I hope you found maybe a couple little things that you could do to make that process more effective and more efficient. For Stock Charts and Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, have a good one.